This is the Laura Flanders Show. Every time I step to a microphone, I develop an uncontrollable urge to shout, Donald J. Trump is not my president. And that's not just because I didn't vote for the fool, not just because he's become the latest tool members of the contemporary clan pull out from their modern day sheets to remind us of when their cloths covered this land with the brutal hand of white racist terror. If you have ever had to dress down some melanin challenge mother talking about all lives matter, raise your right hand and say amen. Amen. So you know exactly what I mean when I say Donald J. Trump cannot be recognized as no mother president. First of all, he's been on this planet for 70 years and still has the vocabulary of a third grader. Not to mention his mouth always looks to me like an incontinent ass that can't hold its own bull in, spewing the septic defecation of ignorance and discrimination, contaminating the already polluted air with inarticulate entitlement, steady providing validation for all them other white men who feel like equal opportunity for anyone else means that we are trying to mother oppress them. Donald J. Trump could never be my president because he began his political career by questioning the legitimacy of the first black president elected in a country built upon the hardworking backs of African Americans. He could never be my president because he had the gall to call for President Barack Obama's birth papers as if this were 1831 and he was one of them cruel white men free to grab any black body and demand documents. In the America we are currently fighting to create, men like that can no more lead us than can a predominantly white police force protect the black descendants of the very brown bodies they enslaved to gain the racial advantage they refuse to let go of, no matter how obvious it is that in America, race and opportunity are linked like poverty and the prison system, like rape and a one's right to choose, like who has wealth and who pays the least taxes, like gerrymandering and who gets the right to vote. It's time poor white folks admitted they've been sold a six for a nine. This con artistry of race and sex and economy isn't new. Donald J. Trump is just another white knot in the noose they keep tying around the necks of the disadvantaged majority. Just another fairy tale they tell in the elaborate inheritance of lies they sell to anyone who isn't rich and white and longing for the good old days when racially cloaked narratives of nationality was the only history available to average Americans, fed to them to keep them from being woke to keep them from poking too deeply into whose pockets most of the wealth that ordinary people work for from nine to five every day in this country goes. Black people have had enough of this systematic bull. Between 500 years of unrelenting racism and the recent rise of this fake ass, overtanned, idiotic orangutan, black bodies have got no more tears left to cry. We ready to try some next level sh to resurrect some Black Panther, Angela Davis, Asata Shakur. Sh I'm willing to bet the same is true for the rest of y'all mother. I'm willing to bet you know that things as they are are unacceptable. Having spent my whole life fighting for better than this, I refuse to give deference to this walking, shameful evidence of what fear and prejudice and a little Russian interference can birth in a nation obviously asleep at the wheel of its own democratic elections. Donald J. Trump is not my president because his tenure in the White House is a result of unchecked sexism, a culture of rape, and the ever-present undercurrents of a newly emerging 21st century Ku Klux Klan. Donald J. Trump is not my president because he wants to disappear my Muslim neighbors, because he wants to deport Mexican-American families, because he fails to recognize that the only Americans who are not immigrant Americans are native Americans. He is not my president because he sexualizes his very own daughter. He will never be my president because I want to demonstrate to my daughter that a man who boasts about grabbing women by their vaginas without their permission does not 
ever deserve her respect, no matter who he is or how rich he says he is, that even though that egotistical airhead masterminded and pulled off the greatest political coup in the history of modern elections, he remains nothing but an illegitimate, embarrassing burden I hope we won't have to carry for the whole four years. Every time I see this orange snake slithering around on my screen, I want to break the TV, rip it off the wall and let it fall from my fifth floor apartment. I wish I could just close my eyes and pretend that none of this is happening. But if we do not keep our eyes open, the consequences will be catastrophic. Every kind of resistance is necessary. When the arm of injustice persists, we have to develop new ways to resist. We have to keep trying. We have to keep changing tactics. We have got to find a way to impeach this mother We cannot be discouraged by these political tricks of distraction. And it might take longer than we anticipate to get this off our TVs, out of office, and outside of our collective consciousness. It could take a year or two, God to help us, it could take another four. But no matter how long it takes, we have to keep to the truth of what we know. This buffoon cannot lead us, so we cannot follow him to the sordid places he will have us go. No matter how normalized the actions of this incredibly imbecilic and inhumane administration. No matter how numb we become to what the news anchors say, you have to say something different to yourself. Donald J. Trump is not my president, has never been my president, will never be my president. You have to make that mantra. You have to say it to your fish, your parrot, your Republican counterpart. Say it over and over and over again to them. Say it and one day, one day when everyone else is listening, when everyone else sees that he is no more than a snake oil salesman, no more than a Cheeto dusted Freddy Krueger invading every aspect of our lives, like all the great walls of divisiveness built before him, he will fall, revealing the yellow bellies of all those who brought him to power. And whoever is responsible, whoever is responsible, be it Vladimir or one of them funny looking Trump children, whoever it is, that Iago mother will have to answer to the rest of humanity for this small handed wrinkle in this bomb warp in time.